coming out of recessions, inflation always looks big because there's a certain amount of pent up demand. And the year on year comparisons look strong. And that's pretty common. I just put a chart together of, of bond yields after every recession since 1960. Every single one has this rise in yields that happens that then reverses without question, 100% of the time. So it's this perfect track record that everybody over anticipates inflation too fast. Some of the markets have been choppier. So it feels to me that this narrative is has run its length um, for, for the time being. Also, I look at the City Economic Surprises Index. So Citibank puts together this index and it looks at our, it, um, does the data come out higher or lower than the forecast of all the uh, economists to figure out are people over or underestimating economic growth or weakness? <laughs> The 32-year-old millennial has the most expensive house prices in history, the most expensive stock market in history, the most expensive bond market in history, faced with no opportunity and debt, coming out of university with debt. And then the world blows up. Now, what was interesting is actually the answer started to come out of that, the world blowing up. Um, and that's as we start moving into a new era. So it is becoming, it's interesting that out of the worst adversity, the biggest recession of all economic history, as the system is essentially broken and is now being papered over just by central bank money, that new opportunities have arisen. I realized what had happened in Spain and I'm like, you know what, somebody needs to start the world's safest bank. And that's a bank that would have no leverage, no rehypothecation. If you deposited money, you would put it straight with treasuries, with the Federal Reserve. So I started looking at this system and I went around the world trying to set this up and you know, it's hard work to set up a bank. Um, and then we had a global macro investor, my research business roundtable in Spain. And uh, uh, one of my members, subscribers, whose old friend, Emil Woods was there. And he said, another ex Goldman guy, another ex hedge fund guy, he's like, you thought about Bitcoin? And I had looked at it. This was 2013, early 2013. Maybe it was 2012, not sure. So I started doing more work into it and realize that Bitcoin could be an answer to a lot of this. This whole blockchain technology means that things like rehypothecation and those reuse of assets could be recorded. So we know who owns what, which is a big problem in the financial system. Uh, maybe we didn't need banks. Maybe we didn't need to trust governments with what they do to the value of money. So I'm like, okay, this is really interesting. So I, I kind of started putting some thoughts around it and wrote an article for Global Macro Investor which was the first kind of basis of a stock to flow model. I said, well, well if it is digital gold, because that's what it was being called at the time, then let's look at the above ground supply of gold out of the total known amount of gold, and then back that into the same numbers we know for Bitcoin. Um, and that Bitcoin at the time was 200. <laughs> so people were like, this guy's an idiot, but it also got circulated around Silicon Valley very fast. People are like, oh my God, there's a macro framework for this thing. So I think I was probably the first person to build a macro framework. And I invested and it went up 100% in a month. So I sold it and was like, well, okay. You sold that's all interesting. of it. Because um, you're not used to assets going up 100% in a month. So if you go back to this narrative that I've been telling you, the global financial system is broken. People are not able to participate. The only answer the central banks have for this mess, oh, so everybody takes on more debt. The only way the, the central banks have to try and keep this ship going and not sinking is printing more money, which is making the situation worse. And we're trapped in this endless loop. I so just want to go back to a point about the Bitcoin backed by nothing. I mean, I think Michael makes the point a lot. Hmm. It's electricity, right? Uh, people don't get their heads around the fact that that's what you're doing here. You're basically using electricity to create a future financial value transfer system and all of the things that come off it. So it is back to, you know, we're used to a world of petrodollars. That's the world we live in now, essentially. So there's, there's a bunch of different things. In terms of what central banks can do, given the nature of central banks and given the nature of the crisis, I think I would have done the same. What would a forward-looking central bank do? They need to look at money itself, um, but we're not there yet. You know, they just don't want to go there because they lose control of their own money if they do. Um, but that's, that's what has to happen.
They know the problem. The problem is we're in a debt su super cycle driven by, you know, the abuse of money, essentially. And that won't go away um, because they're incentivized to continue the same game because there's nothing like disrupting yourself, which they don't want to do. So they'll go half assed towards it, which is central bank digital currencies. But that's missing the whole point. The thesis is coming out of recessions. Inflation always looks big because there's a certain amount of pent up demand and the year on year comparisons look strong and that's pretty common. I just put a chart together of, of bond yields after every recession since 1960. Every single one has this rise in yields that happens that then reverses without question 100% mm. of the time. So it's this perfect track record that everybody over anticipates inflation too fast. And I think the market is doing that. I, it's transitory, meaning it won't last. We have a slightly different setup this time because we have these supply constraints because some of the world is still not reopening yet, uh, as we've seen you know, the issues in India and other places. So the question is, is, does it last or not? And I always go to the bond market first. And the bond market, since about the beginning of March, stop going up in yields while the narrative has, has continued about inflation i think that's interesting i also note that gold probably broke out finally of this downward um, channel that it had been in which was corrective and it looks like this week that it broke out it needs to confirm it but gold has actually been trading as a deflationary asset not an inflationary asset it has been basically following bond yields so there's a signal point there that I think is interesting. So uh, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at things like copper getting a little more choppy. Some of the markets have been choppier. So it feels to me that this narrative is has run its length um, for, for the time being. Also, I look at the City Economic Surprises Index. So Citibank puts together this index and it looks at our, it, um, does the data come out higher or lower than the forecast of all the uh, economists to figure out are people over or underestimating economic growth or weakness and back in uh, um, let's say September they were at peak um, underestimating the economy so this was that largest ever peak in this global um, in this uh, city economic surprises index because every economist was dead wrong basically is what it's saying but now it's come back to pretty close to zero it's at 4.4 and if it crosses zero, it's going to suggest that the economic data is going to come out less than the market expects. And now really what is happening is a parallel financial system that's even more than a financial system. It's the new digital architecture of the world is being built. There's a new promised land and people are migrating across at unbelievable speed. My All my old clients and friends from the macro world are now living in this new world. Virtually none of them are left in macro because the returns are so big, the opportunities, the ability to be optimistic and not pessimistic, while keeping one eye on the kind of burning city of the old, which is the old financial system, but going into this new beautiful world. It's discovering of, it, of the Americas all over again. And it sounds hyperbolic, but it's not. I think it's gonna be the largest redistribution of wealth in all recorded history in the shortest period of time.